guys, it's Kina. Welcome to another video. So today we are doing a channeled messages from your person reading. When I say your person, this is anybody whom you are thinking of. And I do want to mention that you don't necessarily need to have a 3D relationship with this person. So this could be somebody whom you have yet to meet a future person to come into your life. This could also be someone whom you've just been feeling energetically. Um, so I really want to keep it open like that. And what we are going to cover in this reading is how this person is doing in general, how they are feeling towards you and the connection, of course, messages that they want to tell you, and then advice for this connection. I'm not feeling super called to be like, strict with the format so those messages might come out in a little bit of a different order than what I just said but that is everything that I do hope to cover in this reading. So there are four options for you guys to choose from today. I'm going to show you each of the crystals one by one and then please pick whichever one or ones you feel drawn to the most. It's totally fine if you feel drawn to more than one. There might be messages for you in several of the readings today or there may be multiple people that you would like to ask about. But without further ado, let's give you a close-up look at your options. Number one is Rose Quartz. Number two is clear quartz. Number three is zebra ember. And number four is aqua aura. Okay, so as always, take all the time you need to pick. You can pause the video if you need to. I'm gonna go ahead and get started with number one. Hi number ones, so if you guys chose the rose quartz, this is going to be your reading. So we have these romance angel oracle cards here. Um, I decided I want to actually look at these at the end as sort of like advice cards. So we will start off by taking a look into your person's energy. We want to see where they're at, what they're up to where their energy is at in general, but also in terms of you and the connection with you. So in terms of how your person is doing in general, we have patience, releasing, and the fifth house with passion. And in terms of where they're at with you and the connection, we have trust, spell and manifestation and be assertive okay so i just want to take a look at the numbers that we have here i'm noticing that we have a double five going on because we have the number five on the releasing card and then we also have the fifth house um 43 we could also reduce that to seven but um the fives are definitely standing out to me because they are repeated you guys might know this is a number about changes happening growth and development the number seven for me it's about alignment and things moving in a positive direction so the main vibe that i'm getting here is that your person is undergoing a lot of positive change in their life and within themselves right now i think that They've probably wanted change for a long time, but what it feels like is that recently they've had this sort of wake up call or this sort of reality check where they realize if I want things to change in my life, that starts with me. Um, that starts with me changing. So they've either noticed recently that if they want their external life to change, they have to make internal changes first or and I think this is like the big one. They've realized that changing doesn't happen overnight. And I think that in the past, they've been kind of impatient with themselves. It's like they've wanted, almost like they've wanted this kind of instant gratification where they're like, yeah, I'm going to change my life. I'm going to become a better person. I'm going to start living the life that I want. And then, you know, a few weeks go by or even a few months go by and they're like, why isn't my life changed? Why don't I feel different? Um, and I think we can all relate to this a little bit, but I think they're starting to realize that 
you know, great change like this and change that is really worthwhile does take time. It's even, I could say it's even a lifelong commitment to grow into the best version of yourself. But I think that they're, they're sort of feeling maybe I was being a little bit naive. Maybe they were being too, um, I don't know if short-sighted is the right word, but basically it's like they were expecting to be completely changed or completely healed. But now that they've gotten into this work of changing and healing, they realize that it's like a lot more effort than they originally thought. And this is going to take a lot more time than they originally thought. Um, but I think that this is something they feel positively about. They're like, okay, I see what I'm getting into. I see the truth of the situation. And I think that they are very committed to changing and bettering themselves. With this releasing card here, I also think something that they may have realized recently is like, if I want to welcome good things into my life and welcome good energy into my life, there are things that I have to let go of. There are unhealthy habits that I have to let go of. There are unhealthy beliefs I have to let go of. Maybe there are some unhealthy um, connections or toxic influences around them that they had to let go of. Friends, work relationships, even could be even family members. Like this person had to take a really honest look at the influences around them and really be honest about what they needed to release. It's like they were expecting better energy to come into their life, but they weren't willing to let anything go or they weren't willing to change anything. And they've had this sort of reality check, like that's not possible. I need to put in the work and I need to be very honest with myself about what's not working. And I need to commit to this over a long time and I need to be very patient with myself and I need to be consistent because self-improvement isn't just like, okay, I'm gonna change my life and then the next day you're living your dream life and you're exactly who you wanna be. It takes time. And I kind of like the imagery of the easel here because it's making me think of someone being a work in progress and, you know, working on themselves being like a labor of love. I think that they've really committed to the process. They've really committed to, um, they've really committed to the journey. And with actually, with this fifth house, um, message here, which is talking about passion. This house in astrology is all about doing things that we love as well as expressing ourselves because it's tied to the sign of Leo. So there might be some passion that this person has found recently or rekindled recently that is really helping them through this. It's like they found something that makes it worthwhile. So you know, it's like a reason to be better, a reason to get better. Maybe they're really, really passionate about their career, or maybe they're really passionate about their health, or maybe they are really passionate about some creative pursuit like we see in this card. It could also be that they found something that is an outlet for their emotions, something that really helps them to heal. Of course, we do see a more artistic imagery on this card. So um, for some of your people, it could very well be that they are into some sort of uh, creative art, some sort of artistic expression as a way to channel their emotions. And actually, like if this was someone who had a bit of trouble um, knowing how they really felt or getting in touch with their emotions, the creative arts might be something that is really helping them recently. Like when they write or when they draw something, um, they realize like, oh, this is what was inside. This is how I was really feeling. It's like a good tool of expression and exploring their emotions. Um, it could very well be that they're on the receiving end or on the consuming end of creative arts that are really helping them out as well. So there could be specific music or a specific artist that is really helping them get through these tough times. And actually, if you guys are an artist, <laughs> your art might be really helping this person through, um, helping them through a tough time. Um, but it looks like they're moving in a direction that is very healthy. They found a healthy outlet for their emotions. They understand that they need to release things that aren't serving them if they want to see positive change in their life. And they understand that this great change takes patience. I don't know if this is a crane or a stork, if I'm being honest, but I'm just thinking about, um, 
storks are like a symbol of long-term endeavors or promising endeavors so i can tell that they feel really good about the change that is taking place and i i really feel like this person has had some mindset shift where it's like before they were in this kind of hustling mentality or in this kind of impatient mentality where it was all about the destination it was all about the results and i just feel like they've slowed down a lot and are learning more to enjoy the journey and enjoy the process and i just can't help but feel with this like a lot of them have gotten into some form of artistic expression whether they're like open about that or maybe it's just a private personal thing but something about art or like creative expression has really helped them with this it's helped them to realize like oh it's not just about the finished product like you know enjoying the process is like 99 percent of the whole thing and by just focusing on the ending i was robbing myself of so much valuable experience so it's like they're, they've they slowed down they've become a lot more mindful a lot more in touch with themselves i really really like to see well i was gonna say i like to see their progression but <laughs> i'm just i'm just seeing a snapshot of their current energy but i'm getting the feeling that this is kind of like a significant development from before like from your past with this person or from when you knew them previously or the previous energy that you have um that you've picked up from them and you know even this image it looks like someone is is getting things off their chest it looks like a weight has been lifted i'm also noticing there's a lot of bird imagery i just noticed now that these look like birds and maybe that's something i noticed before <laughs> from this card and forgot but these look like birds flying out of the person's chest and we have the bird here um birds do make me think of communication so oh and also we even have like the feather that is being used to write so like birds and feathers might be symbolic of communication it seems like maybe this person wants to communicate to you and get something off their chest with you um, additionally if you guys do see a lot of bird imagery or if you see feathers like on the ground for instance it could be a sign that this person is thinking of you or wanting to reach out to you so let's move on to the second half of the cards here um, and this is representing how your person feels about you specifically or how they're feeling about the connection with you and the first card that we have here is trust this is pretty straightforward um, this person sees you as someone who is very trustworthy sees you as someone who is very loyal i think that they would consider you someone who has seen their best potential but who also has maybe seen them at their worst um, but you stuck around, you continue to care about them, you continue to send them your love and your energy. Like they definitely feel your energy around and definitely appreciate your presence in their life and appreciate your loyalty. I think it's very interesting that we have a message of manifestation here because I also feel like this is quite... Um, quite a straightforward message that this person is manifesting you. Now, it could very well be that they are actively doing this, like they're aware that they're manifesting, it's what they're trying to do. For others, it might be something that they're doing without trying, like they're doing it unconsciously, so they could just be thinking about you a lot, they could be um, like sitting with your energy a lot, um, because of course what we focus on and what we think about that energy is going to be multiplied so you know even if it's inadvertently I feel like you're heavily on their mind and that is going to cause them to manifest you into their life or manifest you back into their life and if you guys have found like wow this person is really heavily on my mind I'm really thinking about this person a lot I'm really wanting to talk to this person a lot that could be a result of their manifestation on their end so because they're so focused on you because they're thinking about you or even for some because they're actively manifesting you that is popping up on your end as like constant thoughts of them or dreams of them or signs of them popping up everywhere so maybe there's kind of this like mutual 
manifestation, mutual manifesting each other's energy going on here. Um, and it's it's just interesting that we have like the the canvas here and then we have the is this called a scroll? I think so. And we have the scroll here, these images of like of self-expression, of getting something down on paper. Um, it could be that this person has been writing a lot about you um, or expressing themselves creatively about you, or I should say inspired by you in their creative expression. Um, or they could have like written some journal entries regarding you or written a letter to you. I don't know if they intend to send it or not. It could have just been like to get their feelings out, but there's something about them writing about you or like expressing themselves about you. It could even be for some, they may have like written a post about you, like posted something on social media about you, um, perhaps indirectly, <laughs> but the words were about you. Um, additionally, it could be talking about you. It doesn't have to be literally writing. Um, so, you know, telling people in their lives about you, about the connection with you. And I should mention, like, even if this is somebody that you have yet to meet, this could be them, you know, telling people in their life, like, I'm, I'm ready to meet my person or I had a dream about my person. So th this message applies even to those who are not united in the 3D yet. It's like, not only are they thinking about you internally, I feel like there is some outward expression related to you. So they're definitely not hiding their feeling of your presence. They may be expressing it indirectly, but they're definitely expressing it in some way and maybe you guys have picked up on that like okay i feel like this is about me <laughs> i feel like this expression is about me or i feel like they're thinking about me maybe you guys have been picking up on that um but yeah even this be assertive card it's like they're definitely not being shy about this at this time or like trying to hide it so i feel like maybe at the time you guys are watching this, you have been feeling this person's energy very, very strongly. They're definitely in an energy of wanting to open up and let things out and get things off their chest. So I feel like the more they go down this path that they're currently on, um, the more you're going to feel their expressive energy and their emotive energy and the more they're going to be opening up to you. Um, I really like this Be Assertive card. Um, how it has the person is like moving the mask away from their face or just you know the mask is not on their face because this is like somebody showing their true self this is someone not hiding behind a persona and just saying what they really want to say and then of course being assertive is like a go-getter energy it's an action taking energy so there's there's really really strong indications of like opening up communication taking action I'm definitely seeing a lot of that, but let's actually, let's drink water and then let's get into the tarot now and see what messages this person has for you. Okay, for group number one, what messages does their person have for them? We have the Three of Cups, the Nine of Cups, the Queen of Swords, the Seven of Swords, The Knight of Swords, and let's look at the bottom of the deck energy as well, and the Five of Swords. Okay, so there's a lot of Swords energy here. There's also some Cups energy as well. So Air Sign energy might be significant in this connection. That is Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, and as well as Water Sign energy, uh, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. So. I'm just going to go through these in order and kind of read it like a story. I think the first thing that this person would say to you is that it looks like you're having a lot of fun 
from what from what they can see of you it looks like you're having a lot of fun and enjoying your life it looks like you're doing well it looks like you're happy and healthy they see you maybe hanging out with other people or talking to other people um, I definitely think that this person is checking up on you and it's like they're posting about you or they're or like posting in ways to get your attention or trying to get your attention in some way but when they look at you it looks like you're doing amazing in their eyes and they're really really happy for you with the nine of cups here maybe there's some something that has come true for you guys recently like um, maybe you've just received a big opportunity or received an important milestone in your life some joy has come into your life and they're really really happy for you about this alternatively this could be a message where they're saying like I hope you get everything that you want in life because this is a card of wish fulfillment this is a card of satisfaction of stresses fading away from your life so this is definitely an energy where they see you're doing well and they're wishing you even more happiness like they want you to be very happy they don't want you to be troubled in any way they don't want you to be hurt in any way they want you to keep living this this peaceful life if you guys have been hanging out with other people recently or even like talking to or seeing someone else recently um, this person might be kind of like curious about them it just it seems like they're checking you out but they also might be checking out people who are close to you you know they might like look at your friends page to see if there's like anything about you popping up there it's like they're really interested in you and exploring different ways of like getting to know more about you um, but when they see you doing well when they see it like good things are happening to you you look good you're enjoying yourself i think that 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 does genuinely make this person quite happy the way that you're appearing to them right now with the queen of swords to them it might kind of seem like you don't need them right now or you're over them or that you're not really making space for their energy the queen of swords is someone who quite is quite like detached and just lets go of things lets go of things that don't serve her she can come across as even like a little bit intimidating at times i don't think this person is intimidated by you if i'm being honest it's like they just see you doing well they see you as the sweet adorable person they've always seen you as but just without them and the way you're presenting to them right now the way they're seeing you right now it looks like you don't need them around or you're over them or whatever it might be but i feel like with the seven of swords here they have a sneaking suspicion that you may be thinking about them too that you may be wanting to reach out to them too because the seven of swords it is about deception or it's about these masks that we put on and it's interesting that we had the be assertive person who was taking who is taking their mask off even though you might be presenting in a way where like you're moving on or you're not thinking about them and just enjoying the other stuff in your life they kind of have this feeling just this gut feeling like maybe you're thinking about them maybe you're feeling for them because especially in this deck the seven of swords has these um crystal not crystal why did i say crystal i don't know maybe that was a, <laughs> a slip that means something to you guys a crescent crescent moons on it which make me think of intuition and so it's like through the persona or through what it might look like on the surface this person feels like there's a deeper truth and it's also very interesting that we have the stars like sparkling on this person especially the eight pointed star over the person's eye because this makes me think of sorry i was like <laughs> burping a little bit the star in tarot is about your hopes your dreams your wishes for the future so in their gut feeling 
that maybe there's a little bit more going on here. Maybe you are thinking about them and, and feeling for them and desiring to get closer to them. In that, there's also like a little bit of wishing. Like they would, they would wish for that to be the case. But with this star being over the person's eye, they might also think like, maybe I'm just seeing that because that's what I want to see. So they might, you know, see you and think like, I wonder if they're thinking about me or you post something. They're like, I wonder if that's a little bit about me. Um, but at the same time feel like maybe this is just wishful thinking. Maybe I'm just taking their behavior that way because that's what I want it to be. There's, there's this kind of vibe going on. Now, what I will say is that this person is not afraid to find out. I would even say like they intend to find out. So I don't think that this person is just like, you know, sitting around and watching you and intending to just like sit back and guess what's on your mind. I think that with this be assertive and with this Knight of Swords, they will be like for sure they will be communicating with you they will be um approaching you because they don't want to just guess how you feel they want to actually know and i think that this is the type of person that they've been really becoming the same way we saw before they're like if i want change in my life i have to be the change if i want my life to get better I have to commit to it getting better and I have to take action. So I think that, you know, while maybe the old version of them would have just been uh, more passive and just, you know, kept it in their head and not been straightforward, I feel like, you know, they're not gonna do that anymore. And if they have some doubts in their mind, they wanna clarify it. They wanna get that off their chest. So if they see you and they're thinking, I wonder if they're thinking about me, feeling for me, I wonder if they're missing me, I wonder if they wanna hear from me. They're like, well, it's only one way to find out. <laughs> and so with this Knight of Swords and with this um, be assertive energy, it's like they're, they're gonna go for it. Um, there is something with, oh, we have the Six of Wands underneath. There is something with Hmm, <laughs> the five of swords and the six of wands underneath. So I feel like this person is anticipating when they do come towards you, when they do reach out to you, maybe there are some things that you guys need to smooth out. Like there's some things that you guys need to sort out. The five of swords talks about disagreements. It can talk about arguments, you know, conversations that are kind of that are kind of hard to have. And if you feel like this person has been holding back in any way, it might be because they know that this kind of conversation is coming. Um, you know, like we can't just, it's like they can't just reach out and then everything's gonna be fine. So maybe you guys have to talk about something that happened in your past or there's like a difficult conversation that you need to have. Like, what did you mean when you did this before or when you said this before? Or like, how were you really feeling in that moment? Because there might've been some moments where like you confused them with your actions or they confused you with their actions. like like your words and actions didn't line up or like intentions weren't clear. And we can't just like gloss over that is kind of the feeling. And I think that they know that. So if they are to, you know, reach out and get things off their chest, they know that maybe this kind of tough conversation is coming. But with the six of wands underneath, you know, this is about victory. This is about coming out on top, um, having your desired outcome. Um, so it's nice to see that underneath because it means they do think they can work things out with you. One thing that was kind of coming out and like I don't know how you guys would feel about this is that in whatever things need to be smoothed out here, like whatever disagreement you guys had that needs to be worked through with the six of wands here, because this is also kind of like this is Leo energy. I think it's Jupiter and Leo, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and we had the fifth house as well. So maybe there's some Leo energy in here as well. 
I kind of get the feeling like this person does think that they're in the right for whatever happened before or like if they if they acted in a way that disappointed you it was only because you gave them a certain idea or not like they're blaming you or saying like you're wrong but i think they would maintain that like i did the best that i could in the situation with what i knew and with how i thought you felt like i don't know if you would necessarily and maybe you don't need it. I don't know what your situation is, but I don't know if you would necessarily get like a, oh, I'm so sorry, it was all my fault, I was wrong, because I think that this person, yeah, <laughs> we have the emperor underneath, which is like kind of a stubborn energy and, you know, not self-centered, but like focus on the self. I think that, yeah, if there was any argument that went on or any misunderstanding or miscommunication this person might maintain that like they were in the right or that it only makes sense that they behaved that way or something like that something like a little bit that might come across as as prideful to you if that makes sense so um the next thing that i want to do in this reading is I'm going to pull some cards from this deck. These are actually like um, messages written directly to you from your person. So we're going to see what they would say to you. I'm going to pull, I think I'm going to pull like four of these. So maybe some of them will resonate. Maybe all of them will resonate. What else? Does group one's person want to say to them? I'm a big mess, but this mess loves you. Hmm? There we go. What else does group number one's person want to say to them? You have the power to end the story however you want. So yeah, it's kind of feeling like, mm -hmm. and with the Knight of Swords too, I would say take your time. Take your time if this person is reaching out to you to really think things through. We do have patience here as well. Um, and you know, we have be assertive, so they're definitely coming towards you, getting a lot of stuff off their chest. The Knight of Swords, when it comes to someone communicating with you, to me, it's like a big communication. It has a lot of volume. There's a lot that they want to say to you, but it can have the feeling of like being a lot to process. Sometimes it even gives me like dumping vibes or just like you know the person is saying a lot at once and it's it's just a lot to think about and with this message you have the power to end the story however you want i'm sort of translating it just based on what we've seen i'm sort of translating it as like a the ball is in your court like i've come forward i've said my piece i've said what i want for the future of this connection. Um, I've said how I feel about the, the conflict that was had or how I feel about the past confusion. Like I've said everything I wanna say now. And so the ball is in your court. Like where this goes now is up to you. So with that being said, I do think when this person reaches out to you, you'll get all the clarity that you need to make your decision and you'll, you'll get all the information that you need to make your decision, but I would just say really like take time to process everything because that's kind of the vibe that I get with Knight of Swords. It's like you just gave me a lot of information. <laughs> you just gave me a lot of stuff to think about. Um, and with there being more swords than cups in this spread, you know, swords have to do with our head, our logic. Cups have to do with our heart, our emotions. So while I think it's very important to take both mental and emotional uh, considerations, maybe this spread is hinting to think a little bit more with your head, make the decision a little bit more with your head rather than your heart. And maybe that just means taking your time to think things through rather than getting like overwhelmed by your emotions and making a sudden decision. 
because you're going to have a lot of information to think about, like even from the past leading up to now and sort of piecing everything together. What else? What else does group one's person want to say to them? We have no. So maybe what they're coming forward to tell you is not what you think it is. Maybe you had some questions, some questions that were left unanswered, but what they're coming forward to tell you, it's not the answer that you think. I'm not necessarily getting that this is a bad no. The way it's kind of coming to me is like, I don't know, for example, you were wondering like, was that all a lie or, um, are you with someone else right now? Or like, were you disloyal or something like that? This no, it's not like saying no to you, but it's a no to some question that you have. And it's like, no, it's not what you think. Let me get one more. And oops. So group number one, I pushed you away, but I actually need you back. Okay, so, oh my gosh, look, at the bottom of the deck, it says it's not what you think it is. Exactly. Okay, so now for the last part of the reading, we're going to take a look at the Romance Angels Oracle cards that I had in the start of the reading for your advice. So we have soulmate. Yes, this is your soulmate. Express your love go ahead and make the romantic gesture. So like huge, huge indications of very open, like heavy volume communication, a lot of communication, a lot of clarity coming through. And again, assertiveness. And then we have very soon, clearly decide what you want so that it comes to you now. I do get the feeling that like there's a high likelihood that this person will be the one to initiate communication. But if you get clear of like, this is what you really want, I think that that could facilitate things because this person is checking on you so heavily. Um, you know, they're checking on your energy so heavily. So you could very well initiate communication with them if that's something that you want to do or if you can just make your energy open to them or make your energy available to them, like I said, they're constantly, it's like they're constantly reading your energy or trying to, trying to pick up on cues from you. So if you don't feel comfortable, like directly initiating to this person, if there's some way that you can make it known to them, some way that you can show like in your energy, in your demeanor, and the things that you're posting, like show that your energy is open to them. I feel like that could, that could make them reach out to you sooner. But yeah, group number one, these are all the messages that I'm seeing for you. So I'm going to end your reading here. Thank you very, very much for letting me do this reading for you. I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching and I wish you all the best. Please take good care of yourself, stay healthy. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel like doing that. I also have a Patreon, so if you guys are interested in seeing even more exclusive pick of cards where you get to choose the topic, that will be linked down below too. And I have a music channel. The song that you guys heard at the very start of this video was an original song. So if you're interested in hearing the full version of that or any of my other songs, the music channel will be linked down below for you as well. Group number one, I'm sending much love to you, to your person, and to your spiritual teams, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye! Hi, number twos. So if you guys chose the clear quartz, this is going to be your reading. I have these Romance Angels Oracle cards here, which originally I was planning on looking at first, but then I decided that I kind of want to keep these as like advice messages for the very end. So I'm going to set these aside and we're going to start off by taking a look into your person's energy. So we want to see 
where they're at, what they're up to, what's going on in their life, and also where they're at in terms of you and the connection with you. So uh, starting with how they're doing in general, we have change, harmony, and Libra with balance. And then how they're feeling with regards to you and the connection, we have Harvest. Cloak with Concealment. And Ask for Help from Others. Okay, so first of all, we have Libra energy appearing here. Um, so you could be a Libra or this person could be a Libra or have Libra placements. And actually, this concealment card makes me think of Scorpio because I'm just, I don't know, I think I was thinking of like the death card and then I was thinking of the Grim Reaper and just the cloak. So this is giving me Scorpio vibes. And then the Harvest card gives me Virgo vibes as well. So, you know, Libra, what did I say? Virgo, Libra, and Scorpio, those could be significant zodiac placements, which kind of makes sense because they're all close together. And if you have your sun in one of those signs, you'll probably have like Mercury and Venus in those signs as well. This could also be representing um, a time frame that is going to be significant in this connection. So um, Virgo, Libra, and Scorpio season would be um, between late August and late November. This could be a significant time in this connection. Um, but starting with these first three cards here, this is actually a very, very similar energy to what was in group one. Um, you guys have the number sevens repeating here. So someone could be a life path seven or someone could be born in July. Um, it could also be something like like how long you knew each other has to do with the number seven, or maybe there's like a seven year age gap or something like that. Um, but in general, the number seven makes me think of things moving in a positive direction, things are in alignment, things are being refined and perfected. It really looks like this person is in a good energy right now, or they're slowly but surely moving towards a good energy. And we also have the message of, um, the message of change here we see that there's some movement in this card, right? With the hot air balloon, like they're being lifted up. And then with the horse, that's like a sign of fast movement. Um, the hot air balloon and also this bubble looking thing here. I don't know. It just looks very happy. It looks very uplifting. I just think this person is doing well. I think that this person is in um, a good energy. I think that they've been making efforts to create harmony in their life. So that means deliberately spending more time on things that they enjoy, deliberately investing their energy into things that make them happy and things that return good energy back to them, and also deliberately distancing themselves from things that weigh down their energy or things that drain them, things that don't serve them. Um, and maybe with this hot air balloon floating up, it's something about like their energy is lighter, their aura is more pure, they feel like a weight lifted off of their shoulders, maybe they're coming out of a kind of stressful situation. Maybe you guys have noticed this person's energy has changed. Like it feels like they're more themselves again, or they just seem happier again. They seem like they're glowing. They seem like they're shining from within, or this is something you're going to start feeling from them very, very soon. If this is someone you have yet to meet and you're just picking up on them energetically, I still think that this can apply. It's like the energy that you're receiving from them, it's going to feel a lot more like happy and bright and cheerful and uplifting. I'm also hearing like um, childlike. I think that this person has purged a lot of heavier energy and purged a lot of negative energy. And with this white horse, it's like they have freed themselves. So there was something in their life that was really, really weighing them down, whether it was like um, a habit that they had, a belief system, a career, a certain connection, a certain commitment that they had like committed their energy to. They are free from something. They have moved on from something and they're back to themselves now. They're back to their regular, um, happy self. 
If you guys have not met this person yet, then this will probably just feel like a positive boost of energy for you. But I feel like if this is someone you've been closely involved with, this could be a little bit more emotional of a transition. Like it's very sentimental for you because you know, now that you, you're seeing this person in their lighter energy and you're seeing them more like themselves, this means that you're coming from the past where you saw them really not being themselves and you saw them really weighed down and you saw them really in a dark place. And that could be something that was very concerning for you or I'm even hearing like scary because it's like deep down you knew who this person was you knew the beautiful soul that they were and there's this feeling of like this is not you something is something is troubling you something is like heavy on your heart something's weighing you down um so like if this person was in your life and you were witnessing that i can definitely see how this transition would be very very um sentimental for you or maybe you've even felt this transition energetically but it really feels like they're coming out of they're coming out of a dark cycle and they're really striving to literally create more harmony in their life and create more balance in their life. I think that this person is likely focusing a lot on their health. There may be something that they have like quit recently that is going to be very good for their health. Like maybe they quit a certain food or like smoking drinking some kind of substance or it's like they're introducing healthier habits into their life and i like that we have libra which is about balance the scales make me think of like what you put in is what you get out and then we also have harvest so it seems like they're in this really productive energy where they're putting efforts into themselves and then they're getting the returns and i think that this is a very prosperous season for them in their life like they're in a really really good energy i just noticed we have little butterflies on this card as well so there's like there's transformation vibes too um but with this libra energy as well like this person is only interested in interacting with people and energies who serve their highest good and with harmony as well it's like i feel like they're trying to eliminate as much as possible any unnecessary drama any unnecessary pettiness any unnecessary toxicity this person might have had to cut ties with some people who were not necessarily like malicious or anything well maybe they were but it could even just be you know people who were small-minded people who were not on their level people who weren't striving to better themselves and were just kind of staying in their comfort zone and staying where they are um, and they had to purify their little bubble like they had to purify their their circle and they're really really invested in only surrounding themselves with energies that are um, the best for them so there's like major vibes of self-care of purging of cleansing of lifting weights like i said it just looks like i meant lifting weights as in like <laughs> they're lifting a weight off of them but they could be literally like lifting weights in the gym as well but it just um it feels like this person is really coming out of a dark place which i think is also a relief for you guys like i said i think you're definitely feeling this energetically in a very positive way um and if you are more closely involved with this person, this could be something that is quite um, emotional for you. So moving on, we have the next three cards here, which represent more specifically how they're feeling about you and how they're feeling about your connection. And it's interesting. There's a couple different ways that I can interpret this. Um, please feel free to claim one or the other or both one thing i want to mention is that the letter c might be significant because we have cloak concealment we also have change so there's like three three letter c's that could be somebody's initial like first middle last name it could be the significant name of a place i'm also hearing like it could be the initial of a toxic person that that this person dropped out of their life or like the name of something that was getting in the way um, it could also be things like Cancer, Capricorn. I think that's the only ones that start with a C. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, C might be significant in some way. Um, so one way that I'm interpreting this with Harvest is that, you know, when we see this person's energy as they only want to surround themselves with the most beneficial energy exchanges, they only want to have this harmonious 
energy in their life that is serving their highest good. I definitely definitely think that you fall into this so this person would view you as like a very positive influence in fact you might have even been someone who inspired them uh, to go down this path or who really really helped them to embody this energy and harvest it's like a promising future it's an abundant future so this person definitely sees a future with you or or at the very least thinks like if i could have group two in my future then I would be very strong, I would be very motivated, I would have a very prosperous future. There could also be sort of um, a desire to provide for you or a desire to share wealth with you or a desire to create wealth with you. Um, harvest and crops and wheat and things like that. It also gives me Empress vibes, which is about, you know, fertility and creating a beautiful future together. So you definitely have a big place in this person's heart and a big place um, carved out for you in their future if you so choose to if you so choose to occupy that space, this person would really, really love to have you. I just heard along for the ride. I don't know if that's their wording. You know, life is a highway and um, really have you along for the ride and along for the journey of life. And they, they really feel that is something that would enrich their life and that would make their bubble even more beautiful. With concealment here, this could be something that they haven't really shared with you yet, that they haven't really come forward and said yet. Um, so I am taking this literally as someone who might be concealing, either concealing their feelings for you or just concealing the extent of their feelings for you, like just how much they do care for you. I just saw 1212 um, on the camera, which is 12 is the number of the hanged man. So there's a little bit of... Um, there's a little bit of a stagnation energy there. There's also um, Pisces, Pisces energy in that. Um, but with ask for help from others right next to this, it's kind of like they want to make some offer to you or offer their future to you. At this time, I feel they haven't been open about that or they haven't come forward about that just yet, but it's like they're asking for advice on how to go about this. So they could be asking their friends, asking people close to them, like, what do you think I should do for group number two? What do you think I should say to them? Or even if this is somebody you haven't um, met yet, they could be asking for advice on how can I bring this type of beautiful connection into my life? How can I bring this type of partner into my life because this is something that I really, really want in my future. So it's like they're preparing, they're asking around, they're gathering information um, to make a beautiful offer to you. The other interpretation that I picked up from this, which is like a little bit, it's a little bit different, it's a little bit interesting with this um, harvest card is like maybe this person has struck gold in some way so they've found something that's going to bring them a lot of abundance or they found something that they really really love in life that they really really want to pursue and they haven't really told anybody about it yet but they're going to tell you and maybe ask you to share in it with them it's a really specific message, I know, but like, for example, maybe this person stumbled upon spirituality and really got into their spiritual journey. And that's been something that is very, very fruitful for them with this harvest card. That's something that has really enriched their life, but they don't really tell people about it. They're not really super open about it but they're going to come to you about it. They're gonna share with you about their spiritual journey and maybe ask for your advice, ask for your input, um, and also share what they've learned. This could also be like, they came upon a really good business idea or like business opportunity um, that they haven't told people about just yet because maybe they don't wanna jinx anything or maybe it's kind of an out there idea and they don't know how it would be received for a lot of people, but they're gonna ask what you think about it or they're gonna share it with you or maybe even ask you to join them and collaborate with them. So, um, you know, I feel like those messages are a bit more specific, maybe not for everybody, or maybe it's something unexpected that's going to happen in their future. But basically the overall vibe that I see from this is like, I truly feel that my future is going to be promising and I want you to be a part of it. And they could be 
um, you know, asking other people how they can go about that. How should I go about taking off this cloak? How should I go about um, expressing that? And there's definitely this feeling of like, I really just want to, I really just want to do this right. Okay, so this is what I see for the first energy check. So we're going to move into the tarot deck now and get some messages right from your person. Okay, so let's get some messages from group number two's person. We have Moon Child, the Ten of Cups, wow. The Devil, the Five of Cups, the Magician, and then at the bottom of the deck we have the Chariot. So there's quite a bit of major arcana energy going on here, which would indicate to me that this is a very significant connection in your life or a connection that could turn into something very significant. It can also be indicative of, you know, having quite a bit of faded factors to it or divinely orchestrated events within the connection. Um, we do have, oh, it's funny. I was saying like, when I was saying the letter C could be significant, I think I said Cancer and Capricorn. And then we have Cancer energy here with the Chariot and Capricorn energy here with the Devil. Um, this could also be, if it's not literally Cancer and Capricorn energy, this could be indicating that you guys are sister signs, meaning that you are... Um, the signs that are opposite each other. So for example, Aries and Libra are sister signs. Taurus and Scorpio are sister signs. Uh, Gemini and Sagittarius are sister signs and so on like that. Um, it could even be more broadly um, a representation of yin and yang. Um, yeah, like with this balance here, two, two energies that really balance each other out. Like you guys have your differences, but it works together really well. And that's actually something that I feel is really expressed in the chariot as well. We don't see them in, ah, oh, look, it's the hangman, <laughs> which I was mentioning before. We don't uh, see it in this card, but usually there's like the white creature and the black creature that are pulling the chariot together. So it's this idea of, it's the balance between yin and yang that really propels this chariot forward. So um, I think that this person really, really appreciates you for what makes you different from them. And for some reason, I feel like that's very important. There could have been some of you who consciously or unconsciously tried to make yourselves more like this person or tried to make yourselves interested in the things that they're interested in as a way to get closer to them or as a way to gain their approval. And I feel like this chariot card is them their 3D self and their higher self telling you like you don't have to do that. It's because you're different from me. It's because you think differently from me. Even you might have different like worldviews or values or you might have different um, mannerisms and it's because of that that I'm so drawn to you and I find you so intriguing and I want to see more of your true self. Just one example that's coming to my mind is like let's say this person and this is just like hypothetical so you can maybe understand more what I mean, but let's say this person is very like gregarious, like they're very sociable and extroverted and they like going out and talking to a bunch of people and maybe you're more of like a low key, keep to myself kind of person. You might have thought like if I want this person to like me or if I want this person to hang out with me, I have to be more um, social, I have to be more outgoing. And the chariot here is saying that is not the case because they would find the real you so intriguing. And especially with the moon child here, um, the moon child gives me this like sensitive soul energy, very spiritual person, could be a little bit of a black sheep, kind of not of this world energy. So like your spiritual side, your dreamer side, your esoteric side, not of this world kind of side. I think especially that is something that they're just so, so 
drawn to and that they would love to experience more and that they would love to learn from more and you know with this initial energy that we read for them maybe they're feeling this energy is something that could really really um that could really really benefit them right now i think with libra and the chariot which are both about balance um they're realizing how important it is to have balance in their life and i think in this next chapter of their life they're going to be taking a lot more of like a nuanced approach towards things so you know, not so black and white, but exploring gray areas. I think they're moving away from an energy where they may have been very like, this is just how it is and very strongly opinionated towards one side. And now they're kind of making efforts to see, you know, see the other side of the equation, put themselves in the other person's shoes and say, okay, well, this and that can both be true. Or maybe the truth is somewhere in the middle. So they're becoming more like, nuanced like that or more well-rounded like that and it's interesting because the hanged man which i did mention it before for different reasons but the hanged man is about that as well it's like finding yourself in that middle gray area and considering new perspectives so they're definitely in the process of cracking open their mind and you know they would like to like explore your minds together explore their mind with you and explore um, explore your mind with you with the ten of cups here this is very very sweet this is one of the happiest cards in the tarot and i really like the i really like the image on this deck because it looks like these two people are free and exploring the world and going on adventures together whereas usually we would see kind of like a family settling down with their children that could be something that this person wants one day but i think what they're really yearning for right now is like they just want to be free with you especially with this white horse and with the chariot too this is like i want to go out and explore i want to go on adventures i want to travel i want to be free i want to see new sights i want to be spontaneous with you this is like the next chapter of life that they want to experience with you i'm expanding i'm harvesting my crops i'm seeing new sights and i want you to be there i want you to be my companion for that i want to have this fun and exciting chapter with you and with the ten of cups being about like complete fulfillment complete happiness i can even hear them saying like there is no one else i would rather go on this journey with than you like i cannot think of a better travel companion there's a lot of vibes of this person seeing life as a journey or seeing life as an adventure or a lot of expressions of like you know we're going along this road we're traveling on this journey like i i feel like that's kind of how this person sees life maybe this is like wording that they have used with you before um but with the ten of cups here they definitely just haven't quite found someone who makes them as happy or who enriches their life just as much now next to this we do have the devil and the five of cups as you guys might know the devil can talk about well there's a couple different meanings one of them could be actually that um this person cannot get you off their mind and they could be having thoughts about you that are you know sexual in nature or just like very passionate in nature sometimes i see the devil is like wow i cannot get this person off my mind like even when i'm not trying to think about them i think about them um it's like even when they're not trying to think about your energy they will see something that reminds them of you your name will pop up a significant date will pop up some song will come on that that reminds them of you it's this feeling of like i cannot escape your energy i'm not necessarily mad about it <laughs> but i just can't escape it and that's honestly been if anything that's been a really nice sign when i'm working on focusing on making more space for what's good for me and and making space in my life for things that are the best for me to have your energy continue to pop up it's just like an affirmation that that i'm right about you or like the influence you would have in my life um i feel more inclined i don't think i spoke at all in the first person for group one which maybe that was kind of unusual because it's like channeling but 
I do feel more, I guess, this person's energy really coming forward and knowing what they want to say and, you know, oh, right. <laughs> like I was mentioning with the devil, these are the fears that hold us back. It's the voice in our head that tells us we're not good enough. It's, you know, those negative thoughts that keep us stuck. And, you know, with the five of cups right next to this, I definitely think this is speaking about a fear of losing the Ten of Cups. Um, you know, this is about loss, disappointment, heartbreak. Um, sometimes in certain decks, there's like imagery of it looks like something's slipping out of your hands or like something has spilled, something is ruined. And so I think that there is a fear. It's like there's a fear of messing things up or there's a fear of like, what if, what if, Things with group two just seem so perfect in my head but in real life maybe it wouldn't go that way maybe I'm being like maybe I'm being too idealistic maybe I'm being too optimistic maybe our differences would actually cause problems maybe I'm like fantasizing way too much about group two and they're not feeling the same way maybe I'm putting group two on a pedestal and they're not like such this amazing person for me, um, you know, kind of second guessing themselves. I feel like this moon child and 10 of cups, it's an emotion that comes very, very naturally to them. And then this devil just kind of gets in the way. And one thing that's very important to remember with the devil is that it's not personal. Everybody, everybody has a devil who is talking shit in their ear and it's not personal at all. So for example, um, Someone could be with the most loving partner in the world, but the devil will still come to them and say like, oh, they're lying. They're, they're just being nice. They don't, they don't really care about you. In fact, they don't even like you that much. And it, it has nothing to do with anything that the partner has done to make the person feel that way. That's just the devil. Like the devil's just a piece of shit like that. It's our insecurities getting in the way. So um, you know, if this person is having these doubts, I just want to really emphasize that it's not because of some way that you made them feel. That's just the devil's, the game that the devil plays. And the devil does it to all of us in different ways. Um, but for this person, it's making them feel like I would lose this Ten of Cups. I would mess it up or it just wouldn't be as good as I'm dreaming. But one thing that's very nice with the magician and also with the chariot, both of these are very action taking, go for it kind of energies. So by no means is this something that would stop this person from taking action. Um, if anything, I think it's going to make them try even harder and I think it's going to make them even more cautious. Um, it could be that they take things slower with you. It could be that they're like a little bit more cautious with you, like I said, but this is not a fear that's making them like, oh, I'm, I'm just gonna forget about it. If I can just give an example, let's say for someone the devil is like stage fright. Let's say someone has to go um, uh, sing in front of a huge audience and the devil is in their ear saying like, you're gonna make a fool of yourself, you're gonna, sing terribly and everybody's gonna boo you and you suck at singing um you know one way that we can respond to that devil is say oh my god devil you're right never mind i won't go out there which i think is well i don't know if the devil has an agenda i think he just arbitrarily talks shit <laughs> but you know that's one way we could react to the devil is like oh my god you're right okay never mind i won't even bother trying or another way we could react to that is say like well, we could also just tell the devil, devil to F off, but another way we could react to that is like, oh my God, you're right, I need to practice more. I need to really, really make sure that I'm gonna do this right. And I need to really, really make sure that I'm gonna put on a good show for that audience. So you could actually use this devil to fuel you, which I think is what this person is doing. So when the devil tells them like, you're gonna mess things up or things are gonna fall apart, they're not saying like, oh devil, you're right. Let me just never talk to this person. Let me just give up. They're like, oh shit. Well, let me make sure that I'm informed and let me ask for help from other people and let me make sure that I, that I come through in the right way and that I do this right and as close to perfect as possible for group two or for my future partner 
who happens to be group two. So it's like, I just heard like my haters are my motivators. <laughs> like they're using, they're using the devil as a motivator with the magician because the magician and the chariot, they're both like, let's go challenge accepted. <laughs> I, and I just saw 30, 30. So that, oh, that's interesting. I saw 12, 12 and I saw 30, 30, um, both 12 and 30 reduced to, um, reduced to three. So threes, are seem to be important numbers for you guys threes as well as sevens because we have seven 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 um, but yeah the magician and the chariot are very like let's go let's do it nothing can stop me so yeah they're not scared of the devil the devil's different definitely there and and that's kind of sad because i think that they shouldn't have to feel this way but at the very least i think they're using this devil as fuel and they're like let's go let's get it <laughs> we're gonna make this work um, so, okay, let's move on to the next deck. And these are like direct messages written from your person to you. So I'm going to pull like four or five of these. I don't remember how many I did for the last group, but maybe some of them will resonate with you or maybe all of them will resonate with you. Let's see, what does group number two's person want to say to them? What does group number two's person want to say? So the first one we have is, I miss the small things. Yeah, I feel like there's definitely, definitely a lot of stuff that reminds this person of you or makes them feel your energy. Even the tiniest little things in their day to day. I think they also remember a lot more than you might realize. Like they remember the little details of the things that you said to them or the little details of what you like and don't like. It feels like they were maybe observing you more than you realize or like attentive to you more than you realize. We also have don't give up just because the situation is not ideal, which I literally think is this person's um, this person's frame of mind. You know, the 10 of cups is about like as close to an ideal situation as you can get. It's your happily ever after. It's everything you've ever dreamed of. It's your emotional fulfillment. And this devil is trying to come in and tell your person, well, what if the situation is not ideal? You know, maybe thinking the person would be like, oh, you're right, devil, let me give up. <laughs> but they're like, no, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to give up just because it's not ideal. What if our differences get in the way? What if we come up against challenges? Okay, then we come up against the challenges. But I'm, I'm not going to give up. What do you mean? Like, that's the energy of the chariot. That's the energy of the magician. We're motivated. We're moving forward. We're going to get through this with our willpower and with our actions. What else does group number two's person want to say to them? We have two, we have I can change, can you? Oh, group number one got this one as well. Um, I push you away, but I actually need you back. And then at the bottom, we also have you make me feel grounded. Yeah, I think you're definitely one of these people or one of these influences that brings harmony and balance to this person's life. And then again, with harvest, this person sees a really, really promising future with you. So the final messages that we're going to look at are these romance angels, oracle cards that we set aside before. So this is going to be advice for you moving forward in navigating this connection. We have love yourself first. Your self-respect makes you more romantically attractive. We have children. Your love life is being affected by children. And this could be the one. You've already met the romantic partner you seek. So it's interesting that we have children coming through here. And we also had um, 
you know, I was getting empressy vibes from the harvest card. And then we had the 10 of cups, which is like happily ever after. So children could be something that that is on this person's mind or it could be metaphorical of like creating a future with you um also the dogs on this card stand out to me because dogs make me think of loyalty so you know this person is not going anywhere or this person's energy is not going anywhere like i said before i think you will always have a place a big place in this person's heart and I think they will have a place in your heart as well. Um, I also think this is something that they've thought about you before. This could be the one. Um, at the time that I'm doing this reading, um, we see a lot of positive intention towards you. We see that, you know, this person, it looks like they're preparing to make some sort of move towards you. Um, with that being said, we do have the love yourself first card here. So I do think that this is encouraging you in the meantime to just do you to live your life to keep you know to keep living your best life um and again there was there's a message of like not to be influenced too much by this person and that came out before it felt like some of you guys might be you know changing yourself to be more likable to this person or maybe changing aspects of your life to make more space for this person or something like that. And I think that their higher self and also spirit is just telling you that you don't need to do that. Like put yourself first in your decision making, whether that's like what major life decision am I gonna make or where am I gonna go today? Um, how am I gonna express myself? Like if you feel more comfortable behaving and expressing yourself in a certain way, do what comes naturally to you. I also heard like some of you guys might be like, oh, I really don't wanna go out, but so-and-so might be there, so maybe I should go. And Spirit is saying you don't have to, you don't have to act like that. Just do what you wanna do, do what comes naturally to you. Put yourself first, put your wants first and just just take care of yourself um not that it's it matters as the most important thing but that's what that's what this person would would want you to do anyway and that's what you deserve to do for yourself to just make yourself feel good and um when i look at this could be the one you've already met the romantic partner you seek i feel like this is you i feel like you're the one you're the one for you like you've already met the perfect person for you and that person is you. I think I want to emphasize like we've seen a lot of this energy of you guys balancing each other out and complimenting each other really really well but that does not mean that that you're halves. That does not mean that you're each other's other half or that you complete each other or something like that and I'm thinking of um it's in Thank You Next when when Ariana Grande says like she met someone else I know they say I move on too fast but this one go last because her name is Ari and it's like oh she was talking about herself like she met someone else and it's gonna last and they're doing really well together um I'm kind of getting that vibe from this card as well I think that you're either being encouraged like because you're already in the process of falling, falling in love with yourself or you're being encouraged to fall in love with yourself. This children card is maybe even talking about like getting back in touch with your inner child. Um, you know, because I feel like in many ways that's a very pure version of who you are. Or if there are children in your life or animals in your life as well, spending time around them could be very beneficial as well because I feel like they're just so pure and they put into perspective what really matters and they just allow us to feel pure joy and to be with their pure energy but yeah there's definitely i definitely feel like you can take kind of a a hands-off approach here maybe it's this person's i don't know if i'd call it like their turn or the the ball is in their court or but there's really that energy of them moving towards you and spirit doesn't want you to worry you know it's like you don't have to accommodate this person anymore. Spirit's kind of saying like you've done that enough. Um, and just do what you want to do and what comes naturally to you. So 
Yes, group number two, these are all the messages I have for you. So I'm going to end your reading here. Thank you very, very much for letting me do this reading for you. I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching and I wish you all the best. Please take good care of yourself. Stay healthy. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel like doing that. I also have a Patreon. So if you guys are interested in seeing even more exclusive pick a cards where you get to choose the topic, that will be linked down below too. And I have a music channel. The song that you guys heard at the very start of this video was an original song so if you're interested in checking out the full version of that or any of my other songs the music channel will be linked down below for you as well group number two I'm sending lots of love to you to your person and to your spiritual teams and I will see you guys in the next one bye bye Hi number threes, so if you guys chose the Zebra Amber, this is going to be your reading. So I have these Romance Angel Oracle cards here. Originally I was going to use them for the start of the reading, but I decided that I want to look at them at the end as sort of like your advice. So I'm just going to set these aside for now and we're going to start off the reading with some different oracle cards to get a look into your person's energy. So we're going to see where they're at, what they're up to, how they're feeling in general, and how they're feeling about you specifically and the connection with you. So in terms of how they're feeling in general, we have stillness, believe, and seventh house with relationship. And in terms of how they're feeling about you and the connection with you, we have confusion, Watchtower of the South with Summer, and Yes. Okay, so one thing I want to point out is that we have the numbers 18 and 45 here, and both of those numbers reduce to nine. So nine might be a significant number for you guys. It could be one that you are seeing frequently. Um, but the general energy of number nine, um, it makes me think of healing and it makes me think of cycles coming to an end. So this could be sort of the vibe of this connection right now. Um, they could also be indicating dates. So like um, one and eight here, that could be January 8th, August 1st, four and five could be April 5th or May 4th. So those could be like birthdays or significant dates. I'm also noticing that the letter S is repeating a lot, like stillness, seventh, south, summer. So that could be someone's initial, like first, middle, last name starts with an S. It could be the name of a place. Um, it could also be like Scorpio, Sagittarius. Um, I think that's all of them. Sometimes I miss them, but I think that's all of them. So let's start over here with these first three cards representing where your person's energy is at in general. We do have stillness here. Um, and this is a very wintry sort of image. Um, it's definitely nighttime. It's giving me the feeling of someone who's going through some sort of downtime or who is taking some sort of time off. It does feel like a kind of low energy, almost I could describe it like a hibernation. I feel this sort of um, stagnancy on your person's end. It's interesting that there's a swan on this card because I feel like often when it comes to swans or the spirit animal of the swan, there's like an emphasis on the swan's reflection in the water or I feel like I often see swans as like mirror images in oracle cards and so it could be that this person is in an energy of reflection but solitary because there's only one swan like they're in this period of solitary reflection they're not um doing much they're not coming out of their shell much I was gonna say like coming out of their cave much so there is kind of a feeling of distance, or I would even go so far as to say um, isolation right now with this person. I'm also noticing we have the number 18 card here with believe. Um, the number 18 makes me think of the moon, the moon card in tarot. And, you know, this has to do with our hidden emotions, with our subconscious, with our fears that are kind of lurking below the surface. So this person could be taking some time right now to heal or to process fears or to process insecurities. Um, we had that like repeating number nine, which was making me think of like healing and closing off cycles. So 
I, I really think it looks like that's what this person is going through right now. I will say I do feel encouraged by the fact that we have... I think that this is a sunrise because we're transitioning from a completely pitch black night sky to now we can see a little bit of sun. Maybe this belief card is asking you to have faith that the sun will rise again or this person has faith that the sun will rise again. This is just a phase that they're going through. They need some time to be alone. They need some time to think things through. Um, with seventh house and relationships, I do think that this phase that your person is going through is something you know, that has affected their relationships or taken a toll on them. Um, if you've been feeling that this person is distant or like you're, you're just not hearing from them much, um, this could be something that a lot of other people in their life would say the same. So it's not like they're singling you out and distancing themselves from you or that they're not like opening up to you. It's more sort of their general energy i think that they're going through it's like they're not really coming out much they're not really um sharing much but i think that this person just realized they had some things to work through and i think a lot of it has to do with like working up their self-esteem because maybe they found that this was really affecting their relationships and i think it's interesting too that we have this like higher power who is holding the holding the boat there's like a little tiny person in the boat, which I think is your person. And then I think this higher power is like their higher self or their spiritual team who is holding them in their arms right now and, and affirming like you need this period of solitude to come back to yourself or to come back to us. You need this period of reflection. And we all, we all have these periods. It could be right now, like, I don't know when this video is going to be up or when you're watching this, but maybe this person's son is like transiting through their 12th house or or like 12th house, 4th house, 8th house. They're more like retreating. They're more within. I feel like this is just a cycle that they're going through um, like we all do where it's time to process. It's time to release. Um, it's time to heal. But yes, I definitely think, you know, from you looking in it might feel like their energy is stagnant or distant or like they're not really they're not really coming towards you right now now it's interesting moving over here this is how they feel about you and so while their personal energy was being represented in this very like cold and wintry way when we look at your energy or how they're perceiving you it's like the summer so it's warm it's bright it's flourishing i feel like this person might consider your energies to be quite opposite and i'm not necessarily saying that this is true this is just how they're perceiving it um they might feel like you know i'm I'm insecure, I'm not worthy, um, I'm this and that. And then they look at your energy and they're like, this is someone who's confident, this is someone who is thriving, this is someone who's beautiful, this is someone who is amazing. It's I, I kind of get this vibe of them putting themselves down and putting you up a lot. Um, I don't know if I would say like putting you on a pedestal, but just like you're out of their league, you're so different from them. There might be a feeling of them not feeling worthy of you or not feeling um, deserving of you. Because we have the watchtower here, I do think that this person is watching you in some way or like checking up on you in some way, checking you out in some way right now. Um, but with this card confusion, there's a couple different ways I can interpret this, but I definitely think that one of them is that this person might be confused as to why like you care about them so much or why you still care for them or why you're still here, um, like why you haven't moved on or just why they can still feel your energy. It could also be that they're just still thinking about you a lot and feeling your presence very, very strongly. Um, and that is something that confuses them. Um, and even for those of you, like if this is someone you don't know in the 3D or you haven't, um, you haven't met yet, it could be like 
they're so confused that they can feel your energy so strongly. So if this is someone that you have yet to meet, it could be that they're in this kind of dark, cold place and they feel this warm, loving energy emanating towards them. This is like the energy of you or the energy of your higher self and they're confused like what where is this coming from why do i feel this energy what's going on so this message can definitely apply like whether you know this person or not but i will say if you are involved with them in the 3d i think it's more like why does group three um have feelings for me or why does group three care about me so much why is group three still here because i'm like this winter and they're like this summer like I'm down here and they're way up here and they're so amazing. There's this feeling of, yeah, they think that you're like too good for them or that you are out of their league. And with this yes card here, you know, very often I would think of this yes card as something that is quite positive, but because of the energy that we see surrounding it, I'm thinking of like um, a confirmation bias, you know? So I'm kind of getting the feeling that this is not really the truth like you're definitely amazing but i think that this person is also definitely amazing and it's just a matter of like finding the confidence finding the self-esteem and believing in themselves and also it's like they would find things to confirm what their insecurities tell them that's what i'm kind of getting with this yes card so if they were thinking like, oh, group number three is going to move on for me or group number three is so much better than me or I don't deserve group number three. If they're having these kind of thoughts, they will see things because they're, they're watching you, right? They're observing your energy. They would like see the things that you're doing or saying or the, the way you're expressing yourself or who you're hanging around with or whatever it might be and interpret it in such a way that it confirms what they believe. Like, see, I knew it. I knew that they're not thinking about me or I knew that they're too good for me or I knew that they're better than me or I knew that they're like angry at me. It could be so many different things, but it's like these negative beliefs they're carrying um, when it comes to you and the connection and how you feel about them that I don't think are true or that are at least being kind of blown out of proportion, but they have this kind of confirmation bias for their insecurities that it makes them like, see, I knew it. I, I knew that I was right. Um, with that being said, you know, we have believe, we have relationship, we have them in this reflective period. I do think that this person is in a very introspective energy right now. And I think they're realizing like, it's almost like they're realizing that they're the common denominator in their relationships and this way of thinking is a common denominator in their relationships and if they want to have like thriving happy and healthy relationships they've got to work on this they've like they can't let their insecurities win like this and they certainly can't project them onto other people and i wonder if this was something that kind of got in the way in your relationship like they were projecting their fears and insecurities onto you or maybe it was like a little bit um, mutual but i definitely think this is a situation where where fears got in the way and things maybe kind of blew up a little bit or things drifted apart a little bit and now we're in this cooling down period where it's like okay i gotta kind of go within now and i gotta figure out why why this keeps happening because like i said i feel like this is a pattern that this person has experienced before in their relationships like i've got to figure out why things ended this way and like I have to go within and I have to do something to change the way that I perceive things and perceive other people's actions towards me and you know it's on me to challenge my insecurities and honestly I can kind of relate to this energy as someone who's like struggled with a lot of insecurity and like still does sometimes honestly um, but I had this kind of I would maybe even call it an entitled way of thinking where it was like I didn't want to do the work to like become confident and love myself. I just wanted, I was like, I'm not worthy of love, change my mind. And I wanted people on the outside to like go out of their way to show me otherwise or like prove to me that I was 
I was worthy, if that makes sense. And it's like, at some point you have to take that into your own hands and you have to unpack your insecurities and you have to show yourself that it's not true, that you are worthy of love, that you deserve to be confident, that you're not, that nobody's like out of your league or you're not like inherently below. So yeah, I think they're kind of taking this upon themselves right now. And you know, it can be kind of a disheartening energy to see. I, I can definitely understand that. But I also think that, you know, this is a cycle that's going to be closed off. These are loose ends that are going to be tied up. We had the number nine, which is about we're closing off the cycle and we're moving up. We're elevating our energy. And we even have the sun rising after the night sky. So maybe for some of you guys, like, you know, because timelines can get kind of wonky in readings. Maybe this is something that this person has already come out of. Whereas for others of you, they might be like smack in the middle of this, um, of this dark period, but they've definitely been through some difficulties and experienced some insecurities when it comes to this connection. But I can say for sure that they think very, very highly of you, a little bit confused as to how like how they got so lucky to have you around or, you know, to have your energy in their life and why you're still here. I feel like they're in awe of that. Um, this card even kind of reminds me of the tower in tarot, um, probably because of this thing in the back. But usually when it comes to the tower and someone's feelings for you, it's like you really came into my life and shook things up. I think that you were definitely a catalyst for this introspection and for this healing Um and yeah, it, it feels like they're admiring you, maybe admiring you from afar. Um, they definitely find you so beautiful. And like, I'm hearing the word like thriving. They just see you as someone who is thriving and someone who is so abundant and so beautiful on the inside and out. And they're, it's like they check on you, not, not to like stalk you or to know what you're doing, but it's like, they just, they just want to admire you. They just want to admire you. So this is what I see for the initial energies. So we're gonna get into the tarot now and see what messages your person has for you. So for group number three's person, what messages do they have for them? We have the King of Cups. The Six of Wands. The Tower, interesting. The Three of Swords. The Knight of Wands, and then at the bottom of the deck, we have the Ten of Pentacles. Okay, so I'm actually going to start with the Ten of Pentacles. Being the bottom of the deck energy, I feel like this is kind of the overarching energy or the overall energy of how they feel about you. This could be somebody with the Ten of Pentacles that you've known for a very long time, or it feels to this person like they've known you forever. They feel this kind of familiarity. Um, even if you've yet to meet this person, I definitely think that they feel your energy very strongly and that energy feels very, very familiar. You know, we had that moon type of energy with the Believe card and then we also have the King of Cups here, um, which are very highly intuitive energies. So there's just something about the way your energy affects this person that I think they've recognized does go beyond like the physical, does go beyond just the five senses or just the 3D, but they definitely feel like they've known you for a very, very long time. Um, oh, we have the four of pentacles underneath. Yeah, um, I think I'm gonna address that in a second because I feel like that's significant, but um, I also think they feel like you know them very, very well. You know them very, very well. And there's a feeling of like, loyalty or a feeling of holding on to you because the ten of pentacles is very very sturdy i think it's a very reliable energy and then the four of pentacles is also like 
It's like you're holding on and you won't let go. Like you're here to stay. So there's this very stable and sturdy energy. And I can hear this person saying like, I won't change my mind about you. Like I won't, I won't change my mind about how I feel about you or like nothing could change my mind. It's almost as if nothing you could do as a person or like in the 3D would really change how this person feels about you in their soul almost like they recognize the soul that goes beyond just who you are in this lifetime it's like a very i don't know if transcendental is the right word but it's like yeah the way they feel about you transcends this physical realm Ooh, i just like randomly picked up when we have the queen of wands so yeah this person thinks you're on fire <laughs> this person thinks you're very hot very beautiful on the inside and out they probably also think you're extremely talented and just like a ray of sunshine like when you walk in the room you just light it up they feel like you turn heads um and with the six of wands too this person feels very very proud to know you and they would probably brag about knowing you or having known you or being able to experience your energy this person might think about showing you off it makes sense like they look up to you a lot so i feel like this person is thinking if they could be with you like they that would really boost their ego or boost their confidence and they would want like everybody to know that you guys are together like you're someone to introduce to the family to introduce to the friends to take home to mom to let the whole world know it's like they would want people to know and i feel no matter what like type of relationship you're in right now they're just very very proud to know you but yeah there's this feeling of this person won't go anywhere i think they're always it's like their heart is always going to stay loyal to you and i think i no it was a different card in this deck that also had like um stars on the person's face the stars make me think of the star in tarot which is about like your hopes and wishes for the future so it's almost like they're saying i won't let go of this wish maybe this is their higher self saying to you i won't let go of this wish um to be with you or for things to work out for you because four of pentacles is very sturdy like i said it means you're not letting go um with the eight of wands in reverse that just came out below this um I feel like for many of you, this is like a no contact situation or very minimal contact or very, very slow contact, but this is their higher self saying, I haven't changed my mind at all. I feel exactly the same way about you as I always did, exactly the same way as you have observed, as you have felt intuitively, that has not changed at all. I think that their higher self is like very, very strongly with you. I wanna say at all times or just a lot of the time and I think is giving you and giving themselves reassuring energy, like very, very consistently. So now onto their 3D self. What I'm seeing in this person's journey is that they were really walking around thinking that like they had it all figured out that they were super mature that they were super healed um it's funny i feel like this is someone who they thought that like emotional strength equals not being sensitive or not being bothered by things or not having things to deal with so you know they would walk around like oh that doesn't bother me or like i'm fine i'm almost like nonchalant and they thought that was the epitome of like emotional strength or of of being okay or of being put together and it's like boy were they wrong i can hear a narrator like boy were they wrong because i think what they've realized or what they're about to realize is that the reason they were acting like that is because they had so many unhealed wounds that were just suppressed and there was nothing strong about suppressing them there was nothing strong about ignoring them that was kind of the story that they told to themselves like i'm strong because these bad things happen to me and i i don't even think about it it doesn't even bother me and it's like they're realizing i will be strong when i look at those things dead in the eye and i process i process what they did to me 
So strength is not in ignoring your weakness, but it's in facing your weakness. I guess I could put it that way a little bit more succinctly. So yeah, it's like this person was going about their life thinking that they were completely healed because they mistook that suppression for like nothing's bothering me. Um, and with the six of wands here, it's like, I don't know, I can just see them acting all strong and acting all confident. And then we have the tower, which I think maybe, maybe this represents like the meeting with you, you coming into their life or something that happened with you. You really like held a mirror to this person and they saw the truth. Something in you like awoke things in them that needed to be healed. And I think that that was very, I think that that was very necessary for them. Um, I'm hearing it's like you were the only one who was real with them or like you were the only one who told them the truth. You were the only one who told them like it is. Maybe they were surrounded by people with the six of wands who were kind of like yes people or who just like went along with whatever they did because um, the six of wands can be like a leader who has followers and I've noticed recently it has this kind of ego boosting or ego stroking energy to it which I don't think I talked about too much in the past, but in recent readings, that interpretation has been really coming up. And then, you know, with them showing up as the king here, they could have intentionally surrounded themselves with these types of people or just been around people who just like stroked their ego or just affirmed to them. So like, if they were like, I don't know, let's say they were emotionally unavailable in a past relationship, and they were like, oh, I'm just not like, I'm just not like that. I'm just not into like deeper emotions. I'm just not into being vulnerable. They might have had partners who were like, wow, you're so strong. You're so detached. Or they just affirmed that to them, if that makes sense. I don't know if that was the best example or, you know, like they were surrounded by people who affirmed like suppressing your emotions or who affirmed that showing emotions is weak and maybe didn't really have partners or people around them who challenged that. Whereas I feel like you guys kind of saw through the crap. It's like, I know why you're acting unaffected. It's because deep down you are very, very affected, but you don't want to like, you don't want to face that. And so this is like your coping mechanism. And I feel like you're like the only person or one of the few people who really who really saw through that and i think maybe that's what confuses this person because they were going through life like i think subconsciously thinking if someone sees my vulnerable side they're gonna leave like they're not going to fuck with that they're gonna just leave my life and it confuses them and i think it makes them uncomfortable even or makes their ego uncomfortable that you have seen that side to them or you saw through to that side to them but you're still here they're like their ego is glitching they're like no that's not what happens when you see my emotional side you leave when you see my vulnerable side you leave like this doesn't this doesn't make sense and i think like being involved with you or with your energy was the first time that they're like maybe my wounds deserve space and maybe my fears deserve to come out and to be addressed and i deserve to be held by this higher power by my higher self by my spiritual team by your higher self um so i think yeah it's like the run-in with your energy the encounter with you it's been a catalyst for a lot of stuff to be revealed from their inner world and with the three of swords here this is like this is a broken heart this is sadness this is wounds this is what they're this is what they're facing right now so i can it's coming together like i can clearly see why they're in this kind of energy right now and why they're feeling confused and why their higher self is coming through to say like nothing has changed maybe some of you guys felt like you you did something wrong or you like regretted something you said to this person because it's like you might have said something to them and then and then they went into this period of stillness and you're over here feeling like you pushed them away like you said something wrong and you pushed them away and their higher self is saying no 
you said exactly what they needed to hear. You did exactly what needed to be done for them. And if, if you're like being made to feel like you said something wrong, that's purely coming from, that would be purely coming from their ego. But as their soul, I can tell you, you struck a chord that desperately wanted to be struck and that this period of stillness is so necessary and this period of reflection and introspection is so necessary. Now that doesn't mean that you have to wait around for this period to be over, but I think their higher self is saying like, you've really been a catalyst for amazing growth in this person and we're so grateful for that and just they would never want you to think like you did something wrong maybe you think like oh if i just had kept my mouth shut then we could be together right now or things wouldn't things would be easier between us but that's what everyone before them did it's like nobody challenged them with this six of wands like it's like you were brave enough to challenge them so you've made an amazing difference in this person's story but it's not your job to like stick around or to, to see things through so i definitely don't want it to come through like that um but just to reassure you that like everything has happened how it was supposed to and you know if if things had gone differently and these things weren't brought up and you just kept going with this person the way you were I don't think that that would have been right because you would have been with with the version of them that is still suppressing with the version of them that still hasn't evolved and so it's like if it didn't blow up now it would have blown up at some point in the future is is kind of is kind of the vibe um I want to actually get a clarifier for I'll just put these here but I want to get and the eight of wands in reverse and the queen of wands um i want to get a clarifier for the knight of wands well it could actually never mind it, i just noticed the queen of wands is how they're seeing you like we spoke about before and knight of wands knights are about movement they're about confidence they're about being a go-getter so i do think this is indicative of this person like suiting up to be fit for a queen, to be a match for a queen such as yourself. Um, I think in this period of stillness and reflection that they're going through, you're still heavily on their mind. Like we saw before, nothing has changed in how they think about you or how they feel about you. It is only their ego that would make you think otherwise. Um, if anything, maybe they feel like they kind of need to swallow their pride and, you know, come through and apologize to you or explain themselves to you. But let's move on to the next deck now and get some more messages from them. So these would be um, messages written directly from your person to you. And I will take four or five of these. You may resonate with a couple of them. You might resonate with all of them. So the first one that we have is it's not what you think it is. Yeah, so I feel like there's some things that this person needs to clear up with you. We also have, I dreamt about you. Are they focusing? There we go. I dreamt about you. I was too scared to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. I feel like there was some situation with you guys where like you came to them with a truth bomb like you came through to them and you were being very real um, and you were speaking from a place of love but maybe they got defensive like they responded with their ego they weren't ready to accept your truth or you, they weren't ready to accept the truth about themselves that you illuminated to them and now they're realizing that like they misspoke or that you like I'm, I'm hearing like you were right all along i'm serious about it 
I think that's when it comes to this Knight of Wands energy, when it comes to this suiting up, I think they're serious about it. And then at the bottom we have, I can change, can you? Okay, so finally we're going to, wait, I should move these down so that the last cards will fit. We're gonna get to the Romance Angels Oracle cards with your final messages of advice. So the first one that we have is engagement. Your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. We have make the effort. Great love is worth taking the steps you're guided to take. And then we have true love. This is the romance of a lifetime. So what I want to tell you guys is that there is beautiful love out there for you. There is true love out there for you. Um, you can experience this with many different souls. It could be this soul, it could be an another soul, but what I'm hearing from your spiritual team is that you guys are ready to experience this true love. You are ready to experience beautiful, amazing, committed love. A love that is worth the effort. And it's like, your love life can reach this higher level of commitment if effort is made. If you guys feel like you have really made the effort towards this person, then I, I don't know, so be it is not the right thing to say. If you really feel like you have made the effort towards this person, like you've done what you can do, I don't feel, like I said, I don't feel the encouragement for you to like wait around for this person because if they want to, they will make the effort, which is what you guys deserve. And I feel like there may be other people who are you know, willing to be serious with you, who are willing to make effort. I think, honestly, I think at the end of the day, what your spiritual team is saying with this is to judge your suitors or to judge your relationships by the effort that is being made. So by the actions that are being taken and what you are being shown. And I mean this in the 3D sense. Like I'm getting the vibe for sure that this is a beautiful spiritual connection. We were getting a lot of messages from this person's higher self. And I can definitely see this person's intentions to make effort and to change and to come towards you. But at this point in time, they are intentions and what i'm really being shown here is that you guys deserve effort you guys deserve something real you guys deserve commitment you deserve true love and so this is what like if you're making a decision in your love life this is what your spiritual team is encouraging you to base it off of is this person really showing me with their actions that they're serious about this are they really making moves towards me it's like your spiritual team wants you to get used to this. They want you to get into the habit of expecting this, of this being a requirement, of this being a given. Like we're going to make space for available people. So I think that your spiritual team is wanting you to give yourself permission to explore other connections. With that being said, I don't believe in like forcing yourself to move on if your heart isn't ready to, but just so that you guys know you can give yourself the permission to explore other connections maybe i don't need to be telling you that <laughs> like you already know that but just just a confirmation we want to see in 2022 or whenever you're watching this we want to see effort we want something that we can rely on we want something real so that's what you guys should be looking out for when it comes to like getting in a relationship with someone or creating space for someone. Are they making the effort? Are they making actions towards you? And that is what your spiritual team wants you to reflect on. And that is the advice that they have for you. So group number three, these are all the messages I'm seeing for you. So I'm going to end your reading here. Thank you very, very much for letting me do this reading for you. I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching and I wish you all the best. 
Please take good care of yourself, stay healthy. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel like doing that. I also have a Patreon, so if you guys are interested in seeing even more exclusive pick a cards where you get to choose the topic, that will be linked down below too. And I have a music channel. The song that you guys heard at the very start of this video was an original song, so if you guys are interested in checking out the full version of that or any of my other songs, my music channel will be linked down below for you as well. Group number three, I'm sending lots of love to you, to your person, and to both of your spiritual teams because they both showed up in this reading. I'm very, very appreciative, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye! Hi, number fours. So if you guys chose the Aqua Aura, this is going to be your reading. So I have these Romance Angels Oracle cards right here. Um, I was going to use them originally like to start off the reading, but then I changed my mind and I decided that I'm going to um, look at them at the end as like your final advice cards. So I'm just going to set them aside for now. And we're going to start off this reading with these Oracle cards here. And this is going to show us your person's energy. So where they're at right now, um, what they are up to, how they're feeling in general, as well as how they're specifically feeling about you and this connection. So in terms of how they're feeling in general, we have happiness, moving towards the light, ascendant with entrance, and then in terms of how they're feeling about you, we have, this is like crossing over a mountain. Ritual with invocation. And in the near future. Okay, so, oh, siren. Let me wait for this siren to pass. Okay, so the first thing I actually want to mention is the number uh, 32 and the number 35. I just felt like those might be... Um, that those might be significant, maybe like you or your person is 32 or 35, or like when you become those ages, it's gonna be significant. Um, but if we reduce these numbers, 32 reduces to five, which is a number of change. 35 reduces to eight, which is like an abundant or lucky number. In this case, I'm, I'm seeing them together as representing positive changes. But when I look at the energy of these cards, I feel like we have two very, distinct energies like two very distinct scenarios in this group um depending on if this is like a connection that is new like you haven't been with this person been in a relationship with this person yet maybe you haven't even met this person yet versus those of you who like this is an ex or like this is someone you're in uh, a separation with. There's like two very distinct ways of reading this that are coming through. I think that I might just go ahead and explain them in order and I will put like uh, a timestamp on the screen of like if you want to skip to your scenario, of course, please feel free to listen to both of them if you feel called to do so. But I'm going to start off for those of you who like this is an ex or this is someone that you know you've let go of you've been in some kind of uh, separation with them in that case maybe you guys were wanting to watch this reading just to see like how they're doing to see what's going on in their life and i do have to say that this person is doing very very well right now with this happiness card and with this moving towards the light this message of moving towards the light it made me think that, you know, there was a time where this person missed you a lot and they were, you know, very much in a dark place um, with regards to your absence or with regards to what went down between the two of you. So this makes me feel like they've come to the light at the end of the tunnel um, and they're starting to feel better about what has happened. And with this ascendant, message here this is the first house this is all about the self there's a feeling of them like they've really come back to themselves they've really learned how to love themselves and with entrance it's like they're ready for a new beginning and then we even have this like crossing over a mountain i feel like this is indicating that it was really hard for this person to 
get over you because mountains obviously like if you're physically climbing over a mountain that's something that is very challenging and there's a lot of ups and downs and with this being a night sky i feel like this was the dark time for them like the process of getting over you was a dark time and maybe at times they didn't know if they could really do it um but eventually they got over this tough mountain and they're on the other side. Now, I do think with ritual invocation within the near future, I do think that this person might be reaching out to you soon to get like some sort of clarity or to get some sort of closure. Maybe there are some things that they felt like were left unsaid or some things that you need to know or some things that they need to know or just to like patch things up to move on without any hard feelings, I feel like there's gonna be some sort of communication like that soon so that you can get your clarity and your closure. So this is the vibe that I'm feeling uh, for those of you who this is like an ex or someone that you have separated with, but if you have not met this person yet or if you've not been involved with this person yet if this is a relatively new relationship this is kind of quite a different message um this person is doing very very well in their life right now i think they've really solidified their sense of self. So they're very sure of who they are and they're very confident about that. And they've come to a place where they're able to express themselves authentically. They know themselves very, very well. They know what's good for them and what's bad for them. They know what they want to invest their energy into and what they don't. They're just feeling really, really in touch with themselves. And I think that this moving towards the light is speaking about them coming to this clarity and coming to this sense of peace and happiness with who they truly are. And we can clearly see with this card, like this person is happy right now. This person is going through a good time in their life. What I want to point out is that in both the happiness card and the moving towards the light card, we see that there are creatures in pairs. So, you know, there's two dolphins frolicking together. There's two people about to cross over the bridge together. We have entrance and the first house, which can be talking about a new beginning. And so when I put this all together, it's like this person is ready to step into a new beginning with someone else. They're ready for a partnership, AKA they are ready for you. So if this is someone whom you haven't met yet, it's like they're feeling really good. They're, they're feeling really good with themselves. And it's like they're ready to invite in a companion. They're ready to invite in someone else to enjoy their life with and to walk, like to move towards the light in the next chapter of their life with. And then if I move on to the cards over here, this message of crossing over the mountain, it was very much giving me vibes of like, ain't no mountain high enough, ain't no valley low enough. You know that song. Because mountains are hard to get over. They represent challenges, obstacles, you know, it's freaking hard to get over this mountain. It's going to take some blood, sweat and tears and it's going to take faith. And I feel like this is your person saying like, I know what I want and I know what I'm ready for and the type of happiness that I want to bring into my life now. And there's not really anything that could stop me. So for those of you who are like wondering if your person is out there, if they're coming towards you, they may be crossing over this mountain right now, but that is not going to stop them. That is not going to dampen their spirits because they're so enthusiastic about finding you and they're so enthusiastic about about welcoming you into their life. And then we have in the near future and ritual with invocation. This is making me think of like, well, it's making me think of communication. I think that this person is actually coming into your life quite soon and I would even say sooner than you think so like you're gonna meet them sooner than you think or they're gonna come in with some important communication sooner than you think and there's an emphasis on this being an important communication when we're talking about a ritual this is like you're swearing something in you're declaring something this is not just like a a little casual small talk that they're doing here they're setting an intention and they're coming together in a formal way 
and they're declaring something. So it's like this person is about to make their presence known. And if this is someone that you already know, that you've already like kind of gotten to know, this could be having like the what are we talk. This could be like talking about your plans for the future. But I'm seeing so clearly like this is something that they are ready for. So yes, I don't know if you guys watched like both of those interpretations. Um, I feel like they are talking about two quite different situations, which is interesting because I don't feel like that happens super often. Um, with that being said, like I mentioned before, it's totally fine if you felt called to listen to both of those. And maybe there is some way that both of those things make sense. Maybe they were like at different points on your timeline or just maybe there is some something about your dynamic with this person or something special about your connection where both like pieces of both of the interpretations make sense but um i wanted to make sure that i gave like each of them their own time because it really seemed like each of them wanted to be known and wanted to be interpreted separately so with that being said i wonder how <laughs> i wonder how this next part of the reading is going to go like if i should if I should keep it in two parts or let's see what cards come out and we'll figure it out as we go. Okay, so for group number four, the first card that we have is the magician. Then we have the page of swords The Three of Wands, the Ace of Pentacles, and we have the Nine of Wands, and then at the bottom of the deck we have the Ten of Cups. Okay, so I want to start by talking about this um, bottom of the deck energy, the Ten of Cups, because I feel like with it being like the bottom energy, it's sort of the all-encompassing energy or the main energy that this person wants to convey to you. Um, this person is sending so much love your way and they wish nothing for you but to have like your happiest life, to have your best life, to have everything that you could ever want, everything that your heart desires. If you look into your heart right now and ask yourself what it is that you want the most, what would make you the happiest, that is what your person is affirming to you right now. That is what they truly want for you and that is what they're confirming to you that you can have um, and with the nine of wands i think they're actually indicating mm -hmm, that it's in the near future that it's just around the corner the nine of wands is a card that makes me think something is near completion um, it acknowledges the struggles that you've been through it acknowledges um, that you have been patient that you've had to struggle with doubt that you've had to struggle um, with obstacles in your way and that you've made it so far and so it's simultaneously saying like I'm so proud of you for how far you've come but we gotta suit up and just hang in there a little bit longer it's as if you are like crossing over this mountain and you're just right here so it's like you're almost at the easy part well actually I don't know if climbing down a mountain is easy but <laughs> like I'm thinking of like running for example running downhill is much easier than uphill and you're just at this part. So you have a little bit more of the hard part to go and then it's going to be smooth sailing. And I'm so proud of you for coming all this way up the mountain, but it's like, we gotta be strong just a little bit more before we reach this 10 of cups. So your person's higher self is coming through with so much love for you, with the best of the best of the best wishes for you like with the purest intentions for you to be happy and is also encouraging you like let's hang in there a little bit longer let's keep fighting a little bit longer um with the magician as well this is quite similar to the ten of cups message in that they want to affirm to you that whatever desires are deep within your heart they will become a reality because you have the power to create any 
outcome that you want for yourself in this situation as well as just in life in general and i'm actually noticing that this message here this will apply like regardless if you resonated with like interpretation number one of this or number two or a little bit of both um this is for everybody this is your person saying whatever it is that you want out of this situation whatever it is that you deeply want in your heart that's what you can manifest and whatever it is that you want for your life and for your future, that's what you can manifest. And I know that your person is feeling very happy right now or they're well on their way to feeling this happiness and it's their wish that you would feel this too. That you would feel this with them, that you would feel this without them, just that this would become your essence. Like I really wanna emphasize that there's nothing but love for you here and when i'm channeling the energy from their higher self like there is so much love for you so i want to look at these as kind of like a progression because the magician is about your ability to manifest and your will to manifest and to create your dream reality and the ace of pentacles i feel like this represents the moment where your dream reality is materialized because pentacles talk about those things that are um, physical, those things that are tangible. Um, I often say with the Ace of Pentacles, this is something you're being offered that is like real and it's here and it's in the 3D and you can rely on it. So you're getting a huge confirmation from this person that all of your wildest dreams can be materialized. So it's not something that you just have to um, dream about or just keep receiving signs that it's coming it's something that you can physically hold in your hand in your in your physical reality you have the power to do this i feel like their higher self wants you to know that you're a very very powerful manifester i don't know maybe they're hinting a little something of a manifestation ritual that you can do oh ritual <laughs> a manifestation that you can do with regards to them with bringing them into your life or bringing them back into your life or whatever it is that you want in your life but they're like just so you know just so you know you can manifest anything you want into reality but now we have to talk about the two cards that are in the middle the cards that stand between your will and your potential to manifest and it actually appearing in your hand it actually appearing in your life so the page of swords talks about being very well first of all it talks about clear and direct communication but it also talks about being very brutally honest with ourselves with others with the universe and sometimes it can talk about truths that we don't want to hear or like pills that are a little bit hard to swallow so i think that one thing your person is encouraging you to do is first get very very clear about what it is that you want so when they were calling on you before to think about the deepest desire that lies in your heart to ask yourself like why do i want this and is this really in alignment with my highest good do I want this because it's in alignment with my highest good or because I think it's going to fill a void or because I think it's going to solve a problem or I think it's going to make my life better? Do I want this from my heart or do I want this from my ego? Um, really analyzing and getting very, very clear about what you want and why you want it. This is something that I personally do i feel like i've spoken about this a few times but i took the gem goddesses manifestation course and this was like one of the steps and a lot of the time there was a significant number of my manifestations that when i really picked apart the reason for it i realized that maybe manifesting that was not the best for me or maybe it wasn't really that i wanted that but maybe something else or maybe there was something better for me um and the things that I really did want ended up manifesting, that I was like really happy about why I was doing it. And I was really clear about why I was doing it. Um, those things manifested for me. So getting very clear on your reason and what it is that you truly want, um, I think could be very important for you. That's one place where maybe brutal honesty might be needed. Um, 
like is is it really best for me to move forward with this manifestation as well as you know the part that's like facing truths that could be kind of hard to face or pills that could be kind of hard to swallow is like am i the version of myself that is ready for this manifestation am i the version of myself who is living my dream life do i have the habits do i have the emotional health of someone the version of me that i envision living my dream life basically asking yourself if you are ready and if not what are the changes that need to be made and yeah this is kind of a tough energy and this is kind of a a troublesome energy but we need to get very very clear with these things um and then the three of wands this is about going out of your comfort zone and being bold and taking action um, towards what you want or making yourself more visible or more available for the things that you want. So if this is you trying to manifest someone new into your life, um, in what ways are you putting yourself out there? In what ways are you making yourself visible? In what ways are you making it easier for this manifestation to find you? So that could be... Um, that could be like going out and trying new activities or being more spontaneous, going to new places, accepting invitations to go out, um, putting yourself on an app to meet somebody. There's many different things, but it's this idea of like, if you're staying in your little bubble, if you're staying in your um, comfort zone, it might be a little bit hard for your manifestation to find you. Um, you know, like your soulmate is probably not gonna come up and just ring your doorbell unless they're like a delivery person or something like that um so it's the idea of getting out there and saying like hey universe here i am hey person that i'm calling in here i am so your person's higher self is coming through to say you can manifest your desired outcome when it comes to this connection and everything else we see that here but these are maybe the steps that are kind of that are kind of lacking and maybe the not so fun parts. Well, actually, maybe this can be very fun. I shouldn't even put that in your head that it doesn't have to be fun because maybe analyzing why certain things make you happy could be very enjoyable or like getting down to the reason of why you feel so drawn to something or someone. It could be a very wonderful revelation. Um, or like with this three of wands, maybe starting to be more spontaneous and putting yourself out there is a very, very fun experience. Um, and I'm like, I'm also trying to adopt more this way of thinking that like the journey of healing doesn't have to be like, it doesn't have to suck or like the journey of weeding out your limiting beliefs can be a pleasant experience. You know, it can be something that you feel good in the process. It doesn't have to be this like tough, heavy energy. Um, I'm in the process of unlearning that. So I kind of wanted to check myself there and tell you as well that, you know, this doesn't ne necessarily have to be like hard or, or cumbersome. And in fact, it could actually make you even more excited about what you're manifesting and feel even more better about it because you realize like the reasons why you're in it and why you want it so badly. Um, and the Nine of Wands card was even hinting like the hard part is almost over. So really, I feel like you guys are very close to manifesting your desired outcome. And this is just your person's higher self like coming through to give you a pep talk to let you know how worthy you are of this happiness and how much they want to see you happy um and just giving you little pieces of advice because from their perspective this is what would be like in between your will to make it happen and actually um and actually making it happen so yeah wow that was actually quite a nice message so let's move on to the next deck I'm going to pull a little bit of, um, I think I'm going to pull some extra cards for this group just because I feel like we might have a mixed group. Um, I'm going to take six for you guys, whereas the other groups had like five, I think. But you might resonate with a few of these. You might resonate with all of them. I just wanted to give you guys a little bit more, um, a little bit more variety to choose from. What does group number four's person want to say to them? I just needed some time for myself. I 
I'm sorry for what happened. I desire you. It was just a small bump in the road. I avoided you because I was afraid to get hurt. And things were complicated, but now I'm ready. So, <laughs> and at the bottom, I'm a big mess, but this mess loves you. It's interesting that we have this card talking about um, a bump in the road and we had this imagery of someone like, of someone climbing over a mountain. Um, I think that this person was like avoiding, avoiding you or avoiding love altogether because they were afraid of getting hurt. And I think that, you know, we spoke about this person getting to know themselves a lot more. I think that in the past, maybe they have involved themselves with people or situations that did hurt them because it's like they didn't know how to pick out the right situations for them or they didn't know how to pick out the right people for them. But now that they know themselves very well, they can discern like, okay, this energy is going to mesh well with me or this energy is not going to mesh so well with me. And it's like they trust their own judgment to enter into commitments to relationships, to situations that won't hurt them. Of course, I know like crap happens and you can have the best judgment ever and still end up getting hurt or betrayed sometimes and that is not your fault but it's like they know now to the best of their ability that they can discern and that they can make the best choices for themselves and so I think it's like they're not afraid of getting hurt anymore because they trust themselves to the best of their ability to find themselves in loving and supporting environments with people who are really good for them with people who really have good intentions and i think they're saying they just needed that they just needed that time for themselves to, to figure this out and so regardless of which interpretation you guys might have resonated with I do know that this person has gone through a huge journey of self-discovery and is no longer afraid. It's like their heart is open. They're ready to they're ready to love again. They're ready to trust again. They've made it through the bumps in the road. They've made it through the complicated situation. Um, they took the time that they needed for themselves and and they're ready. They're ready to open their hearts to happiness again and to love again. And again, regardless of which interpretation you resonated with, I know that this person has so much love for you. They have so much love for you. And this, I'm sorry for what happened. It could be, um, it could be what they're coming forward to say to you, like looking back on your past relationship, or if this is someone you haven't met yet, it could be like, I'm sorry I took so long because I feel like some of you guys, when they're crossing over this mountain, they're, you're like, where are they? Are they really out there? Are they really coming? So they're saying, I'm sorry. I just needed time to figure things out. I needed time to, you know, overcome this fear of getting hurt. Um, I got a flat tire on the way. There's a bump in the road, but I'm on my way to you. And I'm sorry that I took so long. And, and I'm sorry that I kept you waiting. So finally, we're going to take a look at the romance angels oracle cards to see your advice so we have keep an open mind your soulmate may differ from your usual type and expectations we have calling in your soulmate so another mention of soulmates your prayers affirmations and visualizations help bring you together and attraction you attract romantic love by enjoying this moment fully so the advice for you guys is to really enjoy your life and to really study your joy. Like study what lights you up, study what really makes you happy. It's funny because I feel like this is going back to the page of swords where this process of figuring out why you want to manifest the things you do, it can also be a very pleasant experience where you're really getting to the heart of what lights you up, what makes you happy, what makes you passionate, what kind of energy you want around you. I feel like you're also being encouraged to really, really get to know yourself and what makes you tick and what, um, and what turns you on and what you want out of life and what you want out of a partner. Um, 
It's interesting too that we have this message, your prayers, affirmations, and visualizations help bring you together because from your person's higher self, there was so much affirmation that you're a very powerful manifester and that the intentions you are putting out will materialize into reality. So you guys are definitely manifesting a beautiful soulmate relationship here. Um, but then we have this message, keep an open mind. And I think that your advice regardless of which interpretation you've resonated with in this reading, I think that your advice is maybe not to go about manifesting or setting intentions for a specific person. So we're not saying like, I want a relationship with Kevin, but I want a relationship with my soulmate. I want a relationship with someone who lights me up, who makes me passionate, who does X, Y, Z for me, who has this, this, and this personality traits. And that's okay if what you're describing is basically Kevin. We're very close to Kevin. Did I use that name before? I feel like I did. Um, that's okay, but I think it's about keeping an open mind and not limiting this experience of your love and happiness to just one person. And you know, if Kevin really is your soulmate, and you're saying, I want to manifest my soulmate, then Kevin's gonna show up so you don't have to worry about it. But maybe somebody else is going to come up who really, really fits your whole list because the 10 of cups is saying, you deserve to be with someone who's like literally the list of everything you would want in a partner and then some. The 10 of cups is really like above and beyond when it comes to your happiness. Um, and I think, yeah, it's like, your spiritual team wants you to explore more what you really want and what really, really makes you happy. So it's like if your spiritual team is asking you what you want and you're saying, I want Kevin, they're like, well, can you elaborate? Like, what is it about um, like the personality traits of your future partner? What is it about the experiences that you want to have with your future partner? And really, really get into that. Um, and really get clear about what kind of life you want with your partner and you know who, what kind of person you want by your side. And again, if Kevin is a match to that, then that's who you'll manifest. But maybe someone else is a match to that. So you know, we want to be open and we also we want to ask for the best of the best. You know, this is this is a very strange analogy, but. It's like if you were buying something, and this is why I feel weird about it, because it's like, I don't want to compare people to making purchases, but it's just like, for the analogy, if you're like, I want to buy something that has this, 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 like all of these traits or all of these functions, I want something that fits this, and then like you find something that fits all of that, but then you like, you don't go for it because it's like the wrong brand name or something like that. I don't know. That was just the analogy that came to my mind. It's like your spiritual team is just encouraging you to be a little bit more open and focus on like the qualities you want and the experiences you want and the feelings you want to feel um, rather than just like the name that's on it or the label that's on it. Anyway, I hope that that makes sense. Maybe it made a little bit more sense in my head, but you are calling in your soulmate and keep an open mind. Yes. <laughs> so group number four, these are all of the messages that I'm seeing for you. So I'm going to end your reading here. Thank you very, very much for letting me do this reading for you. I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching and I wish you all the best. Please take good care of yourself. Stay healthy. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel like doing that. I also have a Patreon, so if you guys are interested in seeing even more exclusive pick a cards where you get to choose a topic, that will be linked down below too. And I have a music channel. The song that you guys heard at the very start of this video was an original song, so if you're interested in checking out the full version of that song or any of my other ones, um, the music channel will be linked down below for you as well. Group number four, I am sending you guys so much love and much love to your person as well. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.